Okay, hello everybody. Good morning or afternoon to some of you. I am Tanya Marie Scott. Um, just want to welcome you all today. So grateful and thankful that you joined in with us today. Welcome to our family. Um, as always, Pastor Scott has prepared an amazing message for us. This is actually part two of our GPS series, uh, this week entitled Rerouting. So if you did miss last week, please get in touch uh, with one of our hospitality department or one of us in the hospitality department. If you missed part one, you can do that by logging on to our website, which is www.intlword.net. Um, and you can also go on there, leave us your prayer requests, as well as give us any feedback you have. We would just love to hear from you, get to know you better. Um, so today, starting off, we are going to start off with a word of prayer by Brother Emmanuel. Um, and then actually immediately after that, Brother Emmanuel is also going to uh, just give us a little introduction to today's lesson. Um, and then we'll just hand it right back over to Pastor Scott. So I'd just like you all to just prepare your hearts and minds, and we will go ahead and have Brother Emmanuel lead us in prayer. Thank you, Tanya. <clears throat> All heads bow. Uh, Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace in the name of Jesus, giving thanks for another day, another day of life and breath. And uh, I thank you that we're able to come uh, before you and uplift your name through your word, Lord. I thank you that you've led and guided us all throughout this week and provided protection over us. Thank you for the opportunity to spend quality time with our family, friends, and loved ones for the holiday. I thank you for all these many things. Lord, I ask that you open our hearts and our minds up to receive your impeccable word of truth, Lord. And I thank you that all things are made new through you. And I ask that you continue to lead us and guide us and give us direction, not just right now, but throughout this, the rest of this week. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, so I'm gonna have to get off camera for a quick hot second, but I'm just read uh, this week's uh, intro for you all. And it reads, all the answers you seek can be found through the word of God, if you know where to look. The Bible is God's spiritual map that will lead us from life to everlasting life. In the book of Psalm 119, verse 105, it refers to God's word as a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. The Bible exposes those shaded dark areas of our life that prevent us from seeing God's ultimate route clearly. When we receive God's navigator, the Holy Spirit into our heart, he becomes our receiver, connecting us to God's satellite, which activates God's positioning system. All right, over to you, Pastor Scott. All right. Well, wonderful, wonderful. So uh, as you all know, this is actually our GPS part two. And I just want to take the opportunity, first of all, to thank each and every one of you for being able to tune in today. And I want you to know for a surety, and if I've ever said anything that has resonated with you all, this word is for you. And I mean it sincerely. And one thing that I know about God, God can talk about one thing and communicate that to every single person, all the way from my dear friend, Damien, all the way up to my closest comrade, Emmanuel. So I do know that God has a word for all of us. If we would just take the time and appreciate that and think about God. If you notice too, last week, uh, I started in talking about GPS, and I was using it as a comparison what the GPS system, the natural one is, from the GPS system, the spiritual application is. So we know that GPS is a global positioning system. In other words, this is how we are tracked here on Earth. And I did give you all a little background because I remember mentioning that in 1978, the Air Force wanted to be able to track where their enemies are located. That meant on ground, that meant on water, that meant in the air. And how they did it, they used satellites to be able to track where people were all the time. Not only that, but in the tracking of it, we found out last week that it took 
three satellites, at least three satellites to track a person's position. So that it was called triangulation. Three satellites tracking your position from one, sec from one section to another section to another section. We found out that all together, there are 24 satellites that are around the actual world and they rotate around the earth simultaneously at the exact same time and minute and second. So that whichever uh, satellite is rotating, they will rotate and wherever they're located, exactly across on the opposite side of the earth, there's another satellite and all together there are 12 satellites rotating around the earth. So they have total visualization on anyone or anything that they focus in on. We talked about last week that not only that, but we all have what are called receivers. Most of us, when we talk about receivers, we're referring to is like our cell phone. And our cell phone has in it a timer and a receiver so that an actual satellite can pick up where we are at all times. We talked about last week, that Google has the largest uh, network of tracking in the world. Over 1 billion people utilize Google Earth for tracking their location and where things are. We talked about last week also that how do they know when we're driving and we put in our phone where we're going to, how much distance it is and how long it takes to get there. And we mentioned last week that they have millions of data, millions of information coming in from people, not just that day, but for years that they've been tracking so that they'll know exactly how long it takes to get from one point to another point and where you're going. And they have tracked many people who have gone the same route as you're on and as I go on so that we'd be able to track exactly where they're at. All right, lastly, the thing that I want to pick up is that that is called the actual global positioning system. Now, God's global positioning system has similarities, but it is greater. We do know that God's uh, tracking system for mankind started all the way in the garden with Adam and Eve after he created them. God's tracking system uh, as we do know, the Bible says, and we looked at last week, there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, Jesus, who is the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And those three work as one. And so we are tracked at all times by the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They know exactly where we are. Just like there are 24 satellites, there were 12 tribes of Israel in the Old Testament. And there are 12 patriarchs, which are called the apostles in the New Testament. So those 12 in the Old Testament cover the Old Testament. The 12 in the New Testament cover the New Testament. And that means there are 24. Just like there are 24 satellites that cir circle the actual earth, I want you to know the Old and the New Testament perfectly go together. Perfectly go together as one. All right? So then here we have a receiver. And as I mentioned to you, it's this telephone or our cell phone, or it could be uh, your GPS could be in your actual car. It can be your laptop, your computer, whatever those are where you can be able to be tracked in. That's what we have. Well, I want you to know the very thing that God uses to track us is called the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said it like this. It was in um, uh, John 16 and 7. Jesus said, it's expedient for you that I go away. If I, go, if I don't go away, the comforter will not come. But if I depart, I'll send him unto you. You should know, like I know, that when Jesus went to heaven, he sent us the Holy Spirit. And because we have the Holy Spirit, that's how God uses to lead and guide us everywhere where we should go. Just like the actual GPS system on your cell phone will lead you and guide you down the roads and everything. But here's one thing that I noticed about the GPS system, the regular one, this phone. This morning, I was going to another service. And while I was driving, 
I'm looking at my GPS system and I'm looking at, there's nobody really ahead of me and I'm going pretty good. And I'm like, okay, nothing saying that there's any police or anything like that, no problem. And then I start thinking to myself, usually I have a few cars that try to go by me and things like that. And I looked in my rear view mirror and there was the police right behind me. Yikes! <laughs> and I noticed that everyone else that was riding with the police, they all slowed down and everybody started driving slower. Have you done that before? You see the police, and all of a sudden you look at how fast you're going and then you just slow down and everybody's like, hmm, how you doing there, officer? Make sure I don't pass you up. <laughs> and we look so unordinary. We look so abnormal doing it because it's like nobody knows it. When we're speeding or when we're going down that road good, we're like, yeah, get this in. Then we see the police. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. hi, officer. <laughs> well, don't you know it's like that with God? Many times when we're not doing what we should do, God is tracking us. And he wants us to know, just like we would alert and be alert when, when the police are out on the roads and we know the police is, well, we should be like that when it comes down to our life for God. Things that the Lord does not want us to do, we should not be doing them. And so uh, I'm going to go into this lesson today because this is part two. We're going to be talking about rerouting. My goodness, rerouting. All right. Uh, by the show of hands, if you think you'd like to answer this first question. When I talk about the GPS system and rerouting, what does that mean to you? If somebody would like to answer that, let me see your hand and we'll acknowledge, what does rerouting mean to you when it comes down to GPS system? Let's say you're driving, what does rerouting mean? Anybody? All right, Minister Dion. Um, rerouting when basically you're on a route and something comes up to where you have to change your path or direction and go a different way about getting to that same destination. Absolutely. You're going on a destination, you're headed a, a, a direction and then something comes up or something abruptly may come up or you may have made a wrong turn and then your GPS system will say rerouting, rerouting. And I want you to know one of the things that a GPS system cannot do is think for you. It cannot. A GPS system does not know what you are thinking. It can only direct you according to where you say you want to go. It can direct you and it can tell you if you make a wrong turn, but it does not know what you're thinking. Thank God for God's positioning system where the Holy Spirit, which is, is given to all believers, when you believe in the Lord Jesus, he will give you the Holy Spirit to dwell in you. And he will not only direct you, but he knows what you're thinking. And he can reroute us and change the way we're thinking. Did you not realize, even when we gave our life to Christ, it was about having a change of mind. We were going one direction, and then God wanted us to go another. Um, does anybody? Let's. Uh, does anybody just think about this? And if you think you can uh, answer this, and you'd like to answer it, by all means, I welcome people. Raise your hand so I can acknowledge you, and then we'll let you answer the question. Name one thing that the Lord changed about you when you got saved. What did He reroute you? And uh, say to you, what did he do to change you? One thing, anyone raise your hand so I get a chance to know if you feel like you can answer that question. All righty then. Okay. So I don't have any other, I have Minister Dion, but I don't want him to answer all the questions. So I won't ask that many questions. So again, the only problem that I have at times, and I'll share with you all, when I say about answering questions, sometimes nobody will raise their hand. And then, because everyone's thinking, well, someone else will raise their hand. And then when they don't, 
nobody raised their hand, then I, it's like, I don't want to waste time uh, on just having to try to pick someone. What? We have a volunteer, ladies and gentlemen. Sister Jessica. Yeah, that's my buddy. Tell me one thing that God rerouted you in when you accepted the Lord as your savior. What's one thing that he changed about you? My attitude. Woo! Of, of not being um, impatient. Mm -hmm. I was very impatient. I wanted things done now. Yes. God has the ability. Thank you so much for <laughs> answering that. God has the ability to change things in our life. And if we don't realize it, there'll always be things, there's always gonna be a thing that God is working on with all of us. Yes, it is. Sometimes the very thing that God wants to change is the thing that we try to hold on to the most because we are so secure in being a certain way. And God will say, I've been wanting to change that in you for a while. And we'll be like, well, you know, um, I got time. Um, I, I, you know, and then people, when they don't want to change, they hide. That's what happens a lot. I want to show you all something. It's going to go perfectly with this story, uh, what I'm getting ready to teach y'all, but I want to show you something real quick. You all see that? That is a board. It is a, it's a simple, a board, a nice board that I could write on and everything like that. And when I was a kid, um, I grew up in an area where uh, there were not that many people of color. And matter of fact, my brother and I were the only two uh, uh, black, uh, blacks in a school with over 2,000 students. And so uh, people made fun of me all the time because of the color of my skin. And I just, uh, it hurt me, it really did. So if they would say anything good about me, I would think they're just making that up just to say something about me. But I found out later that I had a gift. And the gift that I have is that I'm, I'm able to be able to figure out mathematical problems a lot quicker than most uh, computers. I know that sounds funny because like faster than a computer? Yeah. You remember how I told you that when you're dealing with a GPS system, it collects a lot of information, a lot of data, and if you'll, you'll see how much data it can collect so quickly, it's like millions of thoughts, millions of data in a, just within a second. That's pretty good. So uh, I'm going to let you all see if I'm really that good in my mathematical uh, equations. So what I'm going to do is, uh, how about, uh, let's see, Sister Tanya, I want you to give me six numbers between one and nine. So whatever the numbers are between one and nine, I want you to give it to me. I'm gonna write it here. Now, let me let you all know in advance. When I write it here, because it's on the camera, it may look like the actual letters are, I mean, the numbers are inverted, but you'll know exactly what they are. So give me any six numbers between one and nine, Sister Tanya. Wait, hold it, first of all, have I talked to you about doing this yet? Yes. When did I talk okay. to you about doing this? We did this. We did this. Um, today. Today. Oh, today. No, not today. Okay. Yeah, I talked to you about doing this uh, what, a year ago. We did this. Yeah, yeah. A long yeah, time ago. Okay. So today. All right. Today, not wanna, today. I don't want somebody to think that this is set up. Uh, Fernando, my friend. Yeah, all right, Satania, I'm going to have Fernando do because he's never, I never talked to him at okay, all. Okay, 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 okay. All right. Fernando, I want you to give me six numbers in between one and nine, whatever six numbers you want. Seven. Seven. Three. Three. Four. Four. Nine. Nine. Two. Two. And five. And five. All right, so Fernando says seven, three, four, nine, two, five. You see that? Seven, three, four. In other words, 734,925. You see that? I want to make sure everybody can see it. All right, so at 734,925, I'm going to make a prediction. And because I'm going to make this prediction, I'm going to send my answer to this equation 
Right now, I'm going to send it to Dion and I'm going to send it to Emmanuel. Have I sent you guys any equation answers yet? All right, y'all see them say no? <laughs> if I ask Tanya, she'll say, yeah, five years ago, no. <laughs> okay, so let me see. Here's my, um, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay, I got to put these asterisks in between it because in a minute, I'm going to see if I'm really as smart as I think I am. All right. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay, I'm going to copy this number here. Copy. All right. And then I'm going to send this answer right now to Brother Dion. I don't want you to look at it. All I want, Brother Dion, I just want you to tell me if you got it in your phone. All right, I don't want you to look at the number. I just want you to know if you got it in your phone. And now I'm going to send this thing to Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Emmanuel, did you get it in your phone? Um, okay, I just sent it to you. I want to see if you just got it. Dion, did you yes, get got it. your phone? Okay, Dion got it. You got it, Emmanuel? I have it. Okay, so I sent them the actual answer before I finished this equation because I'm going to let you guys kind of put it together, okay? Let's see here. All right, let's see. Uh, Sister Jessica, give me six more numbers. Nine. Nine. Seven. Seven. Eight. Eight. One. One. Zero. Zero. Oh, no, I said between one and nine. One. Oh, um, six. Six. One more. And two. Two. Okay. I'm going to give a number real quick. My number is going to be, let's see, I'm going to have, I'm going to start over here because I'm not even going to go over there because you got that. Okay. My number is going to be, let's see, zero, which means nothing. Just, just give me a number. Two, one, eight, three, seven. All right. You all going to see who else left here. Um, how about Tanya, since you're right there, uh, give me six numbers. Five. Five. Seven. Seven. Three. Three. Seven. Seven. Four. Four. Two. Two. Okay, I'm going to give one more number. My number I'm going to give is, let's see, four, two, six, two, five, seven. Okay, so we got over here at the top, we got 734,925 plus 978,162 plus 21,837 plus 573,742 plus 426,257. Okay, now I gotta add them up real quick. All right, make sure y'all can see this board. All right, let's see, five plus two is seven, seven plus seven, 14, and two is 16 plus three, uh, I mean, plus seven is 23. I put a three there and I carried a two. And then two plus two is four, plus six is 10, plus three is 13, plus four is 17, plus five is 22. And then I carried a two. And then you got nine plus two is 11, plus one is 12, plus uh, eight is 20, and seven and two is nine, 29. So I carried a two. Then you got two plus four is six plus eight is 14, one is 15, plus three is 18. Let me make sure I did that again. 14, 15, 18, plus six is 24. And that's a four, carry your two. Then you got two plus three is five, plus uh, seven is 12, and that's 14. And then you get to 721, and plus these two is 23. Pair of three, then carry two. Then you got two plus seven is nine, nine plus nine is 18, 
plus five is 23, plus uh, four is 27. Good golly. Good golly. That means the answer should be 2,134,923. Do you all see that? Now, now, if I got this number here, because I sent them that actual answer before I even finished this equation, because I don't know what numbers you guys are going to give me. Uh, let me just check real quick so we know. Uh, sister, I mean, Brother Fernando, did you tell me what numbers you're going to give me in advance? Did you tell me? He says no. Sister Jessica, did you tell me the numbers? Because you took your time. Did you tell me the numbers? You say no. Sister Tanya, did you give me the numbers in time? Did you tell me in advance? She said no. All right. So, Dion, Mother Dion and Mr. Emmanuel, look in your phone and let's see this number. Well, let me say this. If I get this number right, will you all believe that I'm a mathematical genius? <laughs> no, there must be a trick to it. Numbers don't lie. So, okay, Mr. Uh, Dion, what number did you get in your phone and call out your answer that I sent to you? Um. 2,734,923. What? <laughs> no, no, no. Man, that on, must have been coincidental. Hold on. There's no way. It says you sent me no this text way. five minutes ago. Just so yes, anybody. Five minutes ago. Emmanuel, call out the number that you got from me. About to find out. You did turn your you turn your microphone off. Oh, oh, my apologies. Yeah, I, I actually got the same number, 2,734,923. Woo! My goodness gracious. Damien, do you see that? All that was added up before we even put the numbers together. That's the difference between God's GPS system and the world's GPS system. God knows, for instance, I'll work with this. God knows the very number he's trying to get you to in advance. When we are born, we are born in this world with our own numbers. But the Bible said God knew us before we were ever formed in our mother's womb. He knew what we were going to be. So then think about it. When we get a little older, we start thinking, you know, when kids are little, they get real little kids, they don't, they don't worry about the future. They don't worry about things in their life. They don't worry about none of that. But when they get older, they start now calculating things and they want to be their own person, their teenager. But then they have an encounter with God. And what God does, he now institutes the Holy Spirit or he gives them new numbers to reroute their life. Because without God inserting his numbers, they'll never get to this. I want you all to make sure you're understanding. Without God being inserting himself in your life, you'll never be who God wants you to be. And that, that comes by the Holy Spirit giving us the word of God. If we do not have the word of God, it will not work. It will not. We will never become who God wants us to be. So then here's where we get encountered God. Then, like I mentioned today, give me some more of your own numbers. What happens is we'll start doing things in our life and try to carry some of our life from here into our new walk with God. And God's saying, no, I don't want that. He doesn't want you to try to be who you already were because who we were wasn't good enough. So that's why God intervene, intervened here. Like Sister Jessica said, God had to deliver her from a lot of the things that she had in her mind, how she felt about herself or how she had this, you know, she just didn't do things the way God wanted her to, uh, to think or to do. So God said, no, I want to change your numbers. I want to change your lifestyle. And then still, in going, God says this for us. Anytime we start getting off, he reroutes us. If you notice, it took this number here to get to the final number here. 
And the only way we could get to this number right here, we had to allow God to insert certain numbers to our life. I want you all to understand this again. Without God, we never would be the people he wants. And here's where the problem is, where people don't understand. Even when you were having problems in your past life, and even since you got saved, you have issues in this life, we all still need God to be able to get us to the number he wants us to get to, to the place he wants us to be, to the person he wants us to become. Does everybody see how that works? I want to make sure that I'm explaining to you all again how God wants. So, Emmanuel, explain to me what you think I'm saying about these numbers. What I understand you to be saying about those numbers are um, those numbers are uh, basically uh, uh, like, you know, situations or path, paths that we may choose to take. Mm -hmm. And we have to first allow God to intervene and um, put uh, additional numbers into our life because ultimately he's trying to bring us to the ending uh, number. Amen. <laughs> so that's just using numbers. But the all actuality, and uh, if we would explain it naturally, Sister Jessica, how would you explain this naturally uh, without saying numbers? What is God trying to do with our life when it comes down to getting us to be this type of person here? He's trying to transform us into the image of Jesus and the way Jesus is. Absolutely. That's it. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of changes in our life because if one number is off, you will get far and far far away from God. If one area of your life is off, you will be further and further away. God came into our life just when we needed it, just in a nick of time. I'm going to tell you all this, and I mean it. If you did not accept the Lord Jesus Christ when he has presented himself to you and the way he's presented himself to you, I want you to know you could possibly lose your mind. And don't, don't fool yourself. There are a lot of people out here that don't have a mind to serve God. That's why they hide. That's why when you talk to them about God, they don't want to be to hear that. They don't want to, they don't like, that makes them feel uncomfortable. But don't you know, that is the only thing that can deliver them is the word of God, but the Holy Spirit who is our comforter, who is our actual uh, GPS uh, receiver, speaks to us through the word of God and shows us what we need to do. So today I'm going to be coming out of the book of St. Mark, the fifth, the fifth chapter. St. Mark, the fifth chapter. It is a unique, a familiar story. I would say unique story. At least I'll say it's unique because of how I'm going to be allowing the Lord to bring this story out. But you should know this uh, for a fact. God knows right where we are. Every moment, every inkling, every, uh, every, just every minute of the day, he knows where we are. He knows where we are physically. He knows where we are mentally. And he knows where we are spiritually. He does. And he's always trying to get us to be able to commit ourselves to being more like him, just as Sister Jessica mentioned. So in the fifth chapter of St. Mark, here, here I'm going to begin reading at verse number one. And really listen closely because this is a very intense story uh, of something that Jesus encountered. And his encountering was not haphazardly. It was not accidentally. So here we go. Fifth chapter of St. Mark, and it reads as follows. And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of Gadarian, or the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no not with chains, because that he had been often bound with feathers and chains, 
and the chains had been plucked asunder by him and the feathers broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshiped him and cried with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send him away out of the country. My goodness. So let me build this scenario, if you don't mind. In this fifth chapter, what had taken place before this situation, Jesus had gotten with his disciples and they were on this actual boat. And Jesus says to the disciples, let's go over to the other side. And as the Bible, as you heard me read, the other side was a place called the Gadarenes, and the actual city was called Gadara. Gadara was a part of 10 cities. It's called the Decapolis. And the Decapolis was a large area that was run by the Roman rule under Caesar. And those were areas that were filled with sinners evil, ungodly people, people who did not worship God. They did not care about the things of God, the laws of God or anything. And Jesus tells his disciples, let's go over there. Now you should know this also, that the place of Gadara was in the Northern actual region of Israel. So then they went and got in on the Sea of Galilee and they went over to this other side. And when they got over there, before they got over there, I should say, a storm arose. Jesus was tired. So Jesus did what everybody else would do. If you're really tired, get some rest. So Jesus was laying down asleep in a hindered part of the ship. And the Bible says that the disciples, they looked up and they saw this storm and they began trying to bail water out of the ship but the storm had become so boisterous and so huge and so bad that it caught them in the waves and everything. And the water started going in the boat and they began to panic. And they ran to the hindered part of the ship and they said, Jesus, come out, come out. We're, we're, we're drowning. There's a storm and, and we, don't, we don't have control. We, we, we're going to die. And they looked at Jesus and Jesus was asleep. And they said, Lord, don't you even care that we perish? How many times have we had storms in our life and we ask the Lord, according to how we are feeling, Lord, do you care? Lord, are you going to move? Are you going to take care of me? Are you going to be with me? Lord, do you care? I'm perishing. Sometimes there will be things that will come in our life so abruptly and it'll seem like we don't even realize that this storm is in our life. But let me just say this to you. If Jesus is in your boat, if you have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you, you're going to be all right. Yes, you are. Many times, and just like I mentioned earlier, a GPS system does not go and bail water out of the boat for you. Nor does the GPS system have the Holy Spirit dwelling in it. And one of the greatest things and one of the greatest weapons that we have to fight off the enemy or things we go through is the Holy Spirit. Not only will he lead and guide us into all truths, but the Holy Spirit is the power of God unto salvation. So Jesus, who has the Holy Spirit in him, he has the power of God in him. He realizes who he is. And when Jesus gets up, he walks over to the other part of the ship where the rest of the disciples are belling water. They're belling water. And you know what Jesus does? Jesus just simply rebukes the wind and the waves. 
and then there was peace. Immediately, the disciples look, they're soaked, they're wet. You know, they're just drenched. And they were bailing and bailing and bailing. You know, it's kind of funny how people will always try to bail their own water out of their boat before they even get in touch with Jesus. I'm a pastor, so I know what it's like to have predicaments and situations arise real quickly. But I always say, why why people want to call me when it's it's a big situation? Every little situation unanswered, unattended to, every problem that has not been dealt with, it will fester and grow and become a large situation if we don't watch it. And God wants us to be able to come to him when it's just a little situation. It's the small foxes that will eventually spoil the vine. It's the little things that actually turn into big things. Like the Bible said, it's a little leaven that leavens the whole lump. So here's Jesus. He rebukes the winds and the waves, and the people, the, the disciples look up and they start worshiping. By God, what manner of man is this that the winds and the seas obey him? So they're just flabbergasted. They're just like, oh my God, who is this man for real? So they go to the other side in this boat. And soon as they put their foot out of the boat, as was just read in the fifth chapter of St. Mark, here comes a man screaming and hollering, Jesus, the son of the most high God, why have you come to torment me? Let me just say this to you. When you are a believer and you know who you are and you know whose you are and you realize you have the Holy Spirit in you, other people know it also. Don't fool yourself. People, ungodly, sinners, people know who's of God and who's not. If this man, having these demons in him, knew that Jesus was the son of God. Listen, when Jesus got out of the boat, he didn't get out of the boat like this. All right, let me get out of the boat. Hey, everybody, I'm Jesus, the son of God. He didn't do that. And I want you to know this here. You don't even have to do that because people will know you by the fruit you bear. They will know you by the life you live. They will know you by what you talk about. They will know you by what you do. They'll know you by what you say. People will know you. People will observe. They will know you. And here's the unique part about this. This man, he comes crying unto Jesus. Now, as I was building this actual scenario, remember I told you about these islands of the Decapolis. There were 10 different islands, but Jesus chose one. And I want you to know this. Jesus always goes towards the person who has the most extremities. Some of you, Maybe like I was, because I felt like when the Lord saved me, I really wasn't that bad of a person. I really, you know, I didn't hurt nobody. You, you know, I didn't, you know, don't mess with me. I didn't mess with you. I don't know. But I want you to know this. When the devil is fighting us, it is always because of our potential. We have to begin to ask ourselves. Why is the enemy, why is the devil fighting me so hard? What is it about me that's causing the devil to fight me so hard? And what it is, it is exposing you and exposing to you the fact that there must be something about you that is against him. What is it that, I used to always say this to people, why is he fighting so hard? You know, if he already has you, why why even, you know, you don't fight against people on your own side. Not unless you realize that if they should embrace the Lord Jesus, that they have such, uh, they have such a call in their life, it's going to cause his kingdom damage. Notice this. Jesus gets out of the boat. He takes a few steps. 
not only does the demon, sometimes you got to listen to what the devil is saying, what he's trying to uh, make you feel like, what he's trying to put on you so you can realize who you really are. The devil says, Jesus, thou son of, uh, the son of the most high God. Now, here, you, the disciples don't even realize that. They don't even realize that Jesus is the son of God. They realize right now he's a miracle worker. They realize right now that he can stop the winds and the seas from raging. My God, he's got to be somebody. But now they're realizing if they listen to what these demons said, he is the son of God. Here's the next part you want to get out of this too. He realizes also that he has power over them because listen to what the devil said why have you come to torment us jesus hearing him says who are you and the same man who was demon possessed who used to cut his wrist who used to be hanging out in the tombs you know imagine how bad this person's mind has gotten to a point where he's hanging around, he lives in the tombs. He's going around. There's another account in Luke, the eighth chapter, where the same man was going around in the tombs, but was naked, going around, cutting his wrist, cutting himself, hollering, and nobody could bind him. No matter how many men they got, they put chains of metal around his arms, and he would break those chains and feathers. They would put shackles around his ankles, and he would break free from that because this man had was seemingly superhuman strength because his mind was been overtaken by demons. Don't ever believe that you know all that God has delivered you from. There are certain things and certain things that could have and would have probably come in your life. And if you did not embrace the Lord Jesus, and if you do not embrace the Lord Jesus, it will take you over and you'll find yourself losing your mind. And it'll be more comfortable being around dead things than things that are alive. Notice this. He's in the tombs. Filth. Nastiness. Dead bodies. He has nothing to look forward to. His life is in shambles. He can't even think for himself because now these demons are speaking through him. This is what is called possession. But I want you to know, your extremity could be just like this man. It may not be to that degree, but it could be just like this man. But I want to guarantee you this one thing. If Jesus is in your life, if you will allow the Holy Spirit to come in your life, I want you to know the Bible says it like this, greater is he that is within you than he that's within the world. I want you to know there's no power in the world that can stop God from keeping you and strengthening you when you're going through. The problem with most people is that we are looking to other things other than Jesus because we feel like we're smart. There are certain things that Pepno-Bismol, NyQuil, uh, all the medicines in the world, vitamin C, anything, whatever it is that you think can help and heal the body, I want you to know none of them can help and heal like the Holy Spirit. None of them can help and heal like God. And here this man is, Notice this, he says this to Jesus. Don't cast us out of the, don't cast us out of the country. Demon spirits are territorial. They love to stay in areas. They love to deal with people. I really thank God for when Sister Jessica was talking about certain attitudes or things that she got delivered of. See, if you keep and hold on, if a person keeps and hold on to those type of attitudes, they will eventually become more and more engrossed. And then as you know, more and more demons, they invite demons in. Bad attitude invite spirits in. They start out in our mind. If you don't put a lot of these things from your past in check, 
they'll start to grow more and more. And then you'll wonder, why am I feeling so angry? Why am I feeling so mad? Why am I feeling so depressed? Why am I feeling so oppressed? These are because these spirits are trying to gain their ground back. They hate to be kicked out of areas. Every single one of us, when we were in sin, we had demons in our life. But one thing those demons could not do, they could not stop the power of God from coming in our life. And God, thank you, Jesus, thank God that he intervened when it seemed like our life was going one way. He wound up putting in, as we did with the mathematical problem, certain numbers that got us back right with God. And even since we've gotten saved and God sees that we start to get off and we start to go another way, He'll induce certain situations in our life to get us right back where we need to be. Thank you, Lord. And then watch this here. Jesus says to the man, who are you? These demons began speaking through the man and saying, we are legion for we are many. Anyone who knows anything about uh, that is a statistician for the military, I told you all I'm a historian. And so the word legion means having 3,000 to 6,000 demons in him. See, one thing about spirits, they can get together and they can, they can cover uh, a lot of them together in a small space because they're spirits. This man was so morbid. This man was so out of control that these demons had opened up a freeway. They had opened up a place, a safe haven for all of these demons. And out of all 10 islands, Jesus decides to come to this island and find that extremity, find that person who I want to deal with in such a way that if I deliver them, everybody's going to re reverence my power. Do you not know that God strategically put us in his GPS? He strategically knew where we were and how he wanted to save us. And he showed up one day on that doorstep right there in front of Tanya's house. And he showed up one day right there on that doorstep in front of Jessica's house. He showed up one day right there in front of Sister Shay's place. He showed up one day right in front of Emmanuel's place and Janice's place and Lorelai's place and Talisha's place, and Monique's place. He showed up because he knew that right now you aren't able and you don't have the strength to control what's coming in your life. But God said, if I got to leave all of this entire uh, islands, if I got to leave heaven to come here to earth in order to deliver you, it's all worth it. Because he did that for me. While I was yet dead in my trespasses and sins, he came to me and I held on as long as I could. I'm going to say it like this. Everybody didn't hate sin because, you know, like the Bible says, sin is fun for a season. But what happens is we don't know how long those seasons are. And when that fun ends, the Bible says sin bringeth forth death. And if we don't watch it, we linger in it too long, it'll kill us. So Jesus sees this man in these tombs and he realizes, I'm your last chance. So Jesus casts these demons out into these swine. He sees these pigs on this actual cliff area. He casts the demons out into these swine because the demons said, we don't want to leave the country. Please don't let us leave the country. Because let me just say this so you'll know, when demons are cast out and they get cast out in the hell, they can't come back. They cannot come back. So what happens is he casts the demons into these pigs and these pigs run vehemently down this cliff and drown, still die. And the people that were in that area, they came out because they heard that this man had cast demons out of this man who we knew for a long time had all these demons in him. And that same man now was clothed. Look at this. When these demons got cast out of the man, the first thing he did, he covered himself up. 
he became cognizant of what he was dealing with and what he was going through, and God gave him his mind back. Don't ever feel like someone is so far beyond getting saved that they can't be saved because if the same Jesus that saved you and that saved me can save them also. It doesn't matter if they've had mental issue. It doesn't matter what their condition is. God can save to the uttermost. And when he saved this man, this man immediately, when he took, when he cast those demons out, he immediately came into the right mind. And then all these people that were from that country, they came over to Jesus. You would think they would say, praise God. You delivered this man. You delivered. No, they weren't saying praise God anything. They were saying, you know what you did? You cast them demons into them pigs. That was how we made money. You did this and it, it's against us. We want you to leave the coast. Don't ever be the type of believer where making money becomes more important than saving souls. Don't ever become that type of believer where now your life is so precious that the very thing that saved you, you don't want to share with others. So Jesus is getting ready to leave the coast and the man who all the demons were cast out of over 3,000 demons were cast out of. He says to Jesus, Jesus, let me go with you. Let me be and go with you and the disciples. And Jesus tells the man, no, I don't want you to go with us. I want you to go back and tell the people how you got delivered from all these demons that were in you. And here's my conclusion today. And I'll say it like this. Many of you have gotten saved and delivered out of things that others are still trapped in. Some of you were, were drunkards. Some of you were liars. Some of you were cheaters. Some of you were de deceivers. Some of you were whoremongers. Some of you were into all kinds of illicit sins, all types of things you were doing ungodly. And God said, don't you know, I don't want you to have to follow me and the disciples. That's their course. I want you to go and be satisfied where you're at because the people where you're at need to hear about Jesus also. So many times people want to leave places where they are because people are doing things to them and they don't like the area. They don't like the what goes on. Well, God is saying you don't have to like it. And if what you don't like, I'm giving you power to change. What you don't like. There have been many times I didn't like my boss. I didn't like the people I was working around. I didn't like the things I was doing. I didn't even like the job I had. I didn't like some of the people that were around me. I didn't like all that. God said, well, don't you know I've given you my word? And if my word is good enough to change you, it'll change them also. If you come to them like I came to you in a spirit of love and meekness, that same man went back and history declares that he published the word of God. In other words, he went and shared with others in those 10 cities and many of them people got saved and established churches there. The place where it is called is places called under the rule of Rome. So sometimes you will never know what God is going to do with your life if you will just embrace the word of God. And God, if he has delivered you, he can deliver others. The problem is, is that if we don't start looking at ourselves like Jesus looks at us and start sharing the word of God, like Jesus told this man who had these demons to share, others won't get saved. So this is what I'm, I'm closing today with, with GPS 2. GPS 2 is rerouting. God's rerouted this man's entire life to now be a servant of God. He delivered his mind. And you're talking about a powerful testimony. Some of you got some powerful testimonies that we need to hear about. Others need to hear about so they can say that for themselves. If God delivered them, surely he'll deliver me. So that's the far as I'm going to go today. I really appreciate you all taking the time to listen. I pray that this GPS 2 rerouting will register with you. And that you'll take it in, ponder it, see where you are in this story, see where the Lord is trying to take you, and then let's follow him, and let's follow Christ through his word.
and being led by the Holy Spirit. All right. Without any further ado, we're going to go ahead. Uh, how about uh, Sister Jessica? Would you mind ending us with prayer? Yes. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day that you gave us, Father, and we thank you for Pastor Scott, Father God, for speaking through him and giving him um, some amazing words to speak over us and to tell us, and so we can put in action in our own lives, Father God, we thank you for the word. We thank you, Lord, that you are just moving in each one of us, Father God. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you will just keep on um, growing, making us grow more with your spirit. And so we could just um, walk in, in your love, in the love that the Lord has given us, Father God. And I thank you, Lord. And I uh, pray over each and every person that's on this live broadcast and those that will watch again, Father God. I pray that you would just watch over them and be with them and speak to their hearts, Father God, because each one has something different going on, Father. And we thank you, Lord. And um, we just say this prayer in the mighty name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you so very much for your prayer. Thank all of you again for coming out. I pray that you've gotten something out of this lesson today. And we do look forward to next week. We're going to have a wonderful lesson next week. And we'll just see where the Lord meets us because every week is a different week and God knows exactly what we need. So take care. God bless. Appreciate you all. Love you. Bye-bye.